chef, that was lovely food. I'm sure you're all happy with that. Just get ready for a few more thank yous. Um, Salnet, of course, Social Enterprise Lancashire, uh, support the Hogs and uh, have supported them for a number of years now. And we're, we're very grateful for that because this is an opportunity, for those who don't know, um, for really those that are interested in the wider civic uh, society, um, uh, and Sheila will explain a bit more about that later on, but particularly those that are interested in social enterprise as a, an alternative uh, way of doing business. So this is a, an opportunity to get together, to network and to learn about what's happening in the sector. Position with ourselves as social enterprise solutions is that um, we run a number of projects, and we'll just briefly explain some of those before Sheila starts uh, the delivery. <coughs> We're uh, currently working closely with the Department of Work and Pensions uh, on getting Blackpool working, as we call it, and getting part of the Getting Britain working campaign. It's particularly focused on uh, work placements. Now, what's been interesting for me is to differentiate work placements from work experience from volunteering. And I'm working on that at the moment, and perhaps we can talk about that later on. But Alistair will explain a little bit more about that project in a moment, yeah? Or yeah. perhaps after she will. Yeah, yeah. We can do that now. Um, we're also running some projects with the Great Places Housing Group, and we're running a pilot project with Blackpool Coastal Housing, again, directly aimed at motivating people to consider self-employment as, as an opportunity for them that they might not have otherwise thought about. <clears throat> but we're particularly um, pleased to be running a, a project with the college, Blackpool Park College, and I'm rather disappointed Mike Freeland hasn't arrived today because he was going to explain a bit more about this. But the idea is to identify and develop social enterprise ambassadors in the, lo in, you know, the local area, Blackpool. We put together a programme of learning uh, and we're looking to, uh, for suitable candidates. Um, and I, I see no reason why uh, anybody that's here today who would like to go on that course couldn't. They, the idea would be it's a short course, it gives you the introduction in social enterprise, what it's all about, the history give you some practical experience where you would come to a working social enterprise such as this. You'd see how it's done, you'd question people like Kevin to see how does he do this, how does he run his, the business side of this charity. And then the, there's a, a, a more advanced course, uh, again only two hours in dur duration, uh, and that's it, that's the course that we're running at the college. So if anybody is interested or wants to know more about that, um, please contact me or approach me after this presentation. I would be happy to, uh, to talk you through it in a bit more detail. And it's free. And it's free. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. Good. Very good point, Alistair. Thank you for that. Forgot the most important bit about that. Uh, but I'd like to just also introduce Debbie Sedden, if you'd just like to stand up and let everybody can see who you are and what you do. <laughs> Debbie um, runs a company called Tender Works. Uh, Debbie's a Blackpool resident and a professional bid writer. And she has uh, done some work with us recently, and we hope to be doing a bit more with Debbie. She's also, for your interest, brought a sheet, which is at the back there, uh, identifying um, opportunities that are currently available in a wide spectrum, if you like. Obviously, they're not tailored to people's own individual needs, but you may look at those as grant. There's still a lot of money around. Uh, it's a question of identifying what's right for which company. So there's a, there's a variety of funds that are available, and you're welcome to pick one of those leaflets up on the way out. So. That's all from me for the moment. We're going to introduce you to Sheila in a minute, but perhaps Alistair, you'd like to just say yes. a I'm just going to pick up on the, uh, sorry, for those that don't know, I'm Alistair Clark. Uh, I work at Social Enterprise Solutions. I'm also the new director of Social Enterprise Solutions, so that's very good. Um, I just want to pick up on, on this program that we're running with Job Centre Plus, who are the team down here. Uh, they're all identified with their, their badges and whatever. Um, about work placements. 
So I'm just curious, who's been unemployed in their life? In a show of hands. Half? Never? Mm -hmm. oh, Alright. Yeah. Uh, right. And it was it was a very hard experience and as everybody who's been unemployed will know. Uh, lots of people gather around you when you haven't got a job and try and help you for a bit. And then it gets to that stage where you haven't got a job and nobody wants to talk about it and it becomes you almost get isolated as a result of it. Um, so I sort of went through that. Now fortunately for me, um, there was a new radio station starting in Blackpool and I wouldn't exactly say it was an interview that I went for, and I certainly didn't take a CV, but I met up with John Barnett and of course got the job as news editor of Radio Wave when it first started, so that was fantastic. But one of the big things that I needed to do that, instead of just having a, a degree, which if anybody knows John, didn't impress him that much, um, was, well, for his point of view, he was saying, look, I'm starting a radio station, I'm putting people on the radio in six weeks' time, you know, so what experience have you got to show me? And the year before, I had done some radio experience at Red Rose in Preston. So I was able to show him and give him a demonstration tape that I could actually do some stuff, and on the back of it, got a job as a result. Um, and fortunately, I've never been unemployed since, and it's, I can remember everything about it. It's a good motivator to make sure that you stay in employment, I can assure you. So, so what exactly are we doing with Jobs Into Plus? Okay, so everybody knows the job situation, everybody knows the unemployment situation, and in exactly the same way as I found today uh, when I was unemployed, if you've got some experience, you stand a far better chance of finding work as a result of it. So, the people that are in this town at the moment, who are sat there, they haven't got any work, and the, what do they need to actually get into work? They need some sort of experience. That's what we're running at the moment. Now, there are one or two, there's plenty of leaflets around, and as I say, the team from Job Centre Plus are here at the moment. John Barnett, um, who I still run a company with, so we obviously didn't fall out after that, after working together. Yeah. In fact, I have to tell you that not only did John write me a reference when I left the radio station, he took me to my next interview and sat there during the interview and said how good it was to the next So you can't ask for much more than that, can you? It was like a talking reference, I got from that ex-box. Um, so, Tony, I, and the team of Social Enterprise Solutions with John. John's talking to the private sector, all the hotels, all the, we were in a meeting this morning with the Hilton, um, and all these people that could potentially take work experience people on, let them go around with your staff, see some, see some of the stuff that you do, help out, do whatever you need them to do. And then the main thing is, at the end of it, after six to eight weeks, they get a reference from you to say, yes, that person turned up, did a great job, um, we thoroughly recommend them to be working, and they stand a far, far better chance to take that to another employer to actually find work as a result of it. So please do find out as much as you can. We're available, as I say, the guys uh, from Job Centre. Is there anything else you want to add to that, Lisa? I mean, I know Lisa's come down and she might have to speak if we needed to, but... Um, I mean, I do the same job as that, obviously. Basically, I go out to employers um, under uh, Job Centre Plus work experience um, and get the employers on board and we match them with the Job Centre, but we've mainly been dealing with the 16, 17 year olds and the 18 to 24 year olds, so obviously um, looking at a different different. Yes. Different so we've, we've, got the, we've got the age group over 25. We're the Louis Walsh of job creation. We've got the over 25. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we've got the over 25 and overs. Um, so there's one, there are one or two uh, stipulations like that. Um, you know, we're asking for 25 to 30 hours a week. Um, ideally, if that can be sort of spread over four days, so perhaps you might want somebody for four days at seven hours, so on the other day they can still be looking for work. They still get their benefits, um, so that's not a problem. Uh, Job Centre Plus will arrange um, bus travel so they can get around to various different places. Um, it's a very, very simple form that needs to be filled. In fact, I'll fill the form in for you, it's that simple. It's just one sheet of A4, and then it's just an agreement to say that you'll look after them once they go there. So please think about it. Please think about 
I mean, we've even got Kevin and he's got the, uh, the home over here, so we might get him in a corner and see what he can do later on. But everybody, just think about what can somebody do in your organisation? What, what, how can you help somebody to actually find work as a result of it? Okay? Thank you very much indeed for that.